Good evening. It's a pleasure to welcome you here tonight. I'm uh, serving as the teaching elder and pastor of Hope Christian Church, and it is our honour to host this Trinity debate. And I thank you for coming. My first question is, who's travelled in a state to be here tonight? I know there's a few interstate. Where are you? Okay, they're being shy. There we go. There's a few hands there. There we go. Who's travelled internationally? All right, that's probably about it. So as I said, I'm the teaching elder and pastor here at Hope Christian Church. We have quite a representation from our home church and quite a representation from other churches abroad. I do hope that among us there are UPC, oneness people, and there are Trinitarians, and we're ready to hear a very sound, scholarly, academic, scriptural debate. We're looking forward to that. So to get underway, I'm going to do some introductions, and then we're going to let these uh, gentlemen get amongst it. So um, it is a pleasure to see you, and thank you for dawning our building this evening. First and foremost, I will start with the honorary Craig Zaki, who is our moderator. Can you stand up, Craig? <laughs> On the back side of one of these newsletters that you can get handed out at the door of all Craig's information and where he's been, what he's done, and why he's qualified to take on this moderation assignment tonight. Now, on to our debaters. First and foremost, I will introduce to you our oneness apologist, Mr. Roger Perkins. Mr. Perkins is a 44-year-old oneness apologist from Summit, Mississippi. Is that all right? Is that... Okay, okay, okay. I've been practicing that all week. He has authored numerous books and journal articles delivering apostolic apologetics. He's engaged in numerous public debates and is a member of the Apostolic Theological Forum. He is a former pastor and on his return to the U.S. after tonight's debate, he will plant a new church. Our next debater from the Trinitarian position will be Dr. James White. <laughs> Dr. White will affirm our proposition this evening. And as I said, you get yourself a handout and you'll read everything about him. This is exhaustive and I'm not going to try except to say Dr. White has two, what I can tell, two doctorates, one in ministry, one in theology. He has masters, he has bachelors, he has written... 30 plus books and done over 110 moderated debates. So these are our guests tonight and these are the gentlemen that will go at it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll read the proposition and then I'll go no further and let our gentlemen have at it. So the proposition is this. If you have it, a handout again, you can read along on the front page. All the information is in here. And this is how our proposition reads. Did the Son, as a self-conscious divine person, distinct from the Father and Holy Spirit exist prior to his incarnation as Jesus of Nazareth? That's the question. Dr. James will have the affirmative and Dr. Roger will bring the negative. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the Trinity debate here at Hope Christian Church. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the first segment of tonight's debate is where each speaker will get to propose their substantive argument addressing the topic. Each speaker will have 26 minutes and they will outline and define their case. Um, after this, then we'll have periods of rebuttal and cross-examination later. Um, I would now like to invite Dr. James to open the affirmative case this evening. Well, thank you very much. It is indeed an honor to be with you here in Brisbane this evening. Uh, this is my second time to, uh, to Brisbane, and uh, I truly enjoy the opportunity of meeting with, uh, with the brethren here. And this is, of course, an extremely important debate, and I hope that you will be very focused in hearing what both sides have to say uh, this evening. Uh, it is a pleasure to have Roger Perkins here. Uh, it is a, I can, now he knows, and I know. It's a long trip down here. And uh, hopefully he's been adjusted. I uh, was just in Sydney. I was at UNSW uh, doing a debate Monday evening with Abdullah Kunda, an Islamic apologist, uh, on the subject of the incarnation. So it is a, a similar topic that we are addressing this evening. And I am very thankful for the opportunity uh, to be with you indeed. The subject that we have is a very important one, the debate between historic Trinitarian belief and the modern oneness Pentecostal position touches upon 
all aspects of theology proper, including all aspects of Trinitarian theology itself. And while some other issues that we will not have time to get into this evening, what I'm saying is there's, there's many things that we will just barely touch upon tonight, some things I will not touch upon that I think are extremely relevant, uh, but we need to be focused very much upon the central issue this evening. While some issues shed great light upon the viability of the respective views, as I will illustrate with the issue of Christ the mediator, there is only one issue that, in my opinion, absolutely settles the conflict in and of itself. And that is our thesis topic this evening. Did the Son, as a divine person, not as an idealized plan, not as a thought in the Father's mind, but as a divine person aware of his own existence and the existence of the Father and the Spirit, exist prior to the incarnation itself, that is, in eternity past? Our question is very simple. If the Son, as a divine person, engaged in activities that only a person can engage in prior to the incarnation, prior to his birth in Bethlehem, then we have clearly a refutation of the oneness position. For the whole aspect this evening will be, is there a Unitarian understanding of monotheism? That is, there is only one person that shares the one being of God, or a Trinitarian understanding of monotheism, where you have the one being that is God, infinite and eternal, shared by three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Everyone here this evening is a monotheist. I am not just a conceptual monotheist, I am a confessional monotheist and a functional monotheist. The question is, does the Bible teach that that one being, that one eternal being that is God, is that shared by three persons? Or is that one being of God shared by only one person who takes different modes or relationships to his creation? I want to go to the Bible because I believe the Bible is the foundational document of the Christian faith. What I believe, I believe because the Bible teaches it. I am a biblical Trinitarian. It would be much easier to adopt a different perspective. But I believe in sola scriptura, the scripture alone is the sole infallible rule of faith of the church, and tota scriptura, I must believe all that scripture teaches. And so I must harmonize all of the divine revelation. I cannot pick and choose. I cannot put one part of the revelation over another part of the revelation. I must allow God's word to speak. And so I truly believe that the debate this evening will be decided in the inspired text itself, I hope, that you agree with me on that important issue this evening. Let's take a look at the Carmen Christi, the hymn to Christ as God, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and following. Let me just remind you, this is a sermon illustration. The Apostle Paul is exhorting the Philippians to humility of mind, that they are to not look on their own things alone, but to look to the things of others. Even though the Christians have equality with one another, they're to lay aside that equality in the service of others. And so what do we have? Philippians 2, 5 through 11. You must have the same mindset among yourselves that was in Christ Jesus, who although he eternally existed in the very form of God, and morphe theu hu parkon, he existed in God's form. It's the same word that's going to be used of his entering into servanthood. If he was a true human, a true servant, then he was truly God, who although he eternally existed in the very form of God, did not consider, that is a word of something that a person does, to consider something, to think about something, that's what a person does, did not consider that equality he had with God.